times of stress are 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 there for a reason, right? They show us who the winners and who the losers are. And scary times are the mother of entrepreneurship, right? Like I, I got into the business the day Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy and it was the best time to get into the business in hindsight. And I think a lot of us now, especially if you're a new agent and if you're coming out of this, or even if you're a veteran, we're all gonna look back and we're gonna say, wow, you know what? I'm glad I stuck through 2020 because I think the 2020s, right? 2020 to 2030 are gonna rip and they're gonna be insane. Now that we've kind of like burst this little bubble because we we're all kind of waiting for it. Yeah. Now it's happened, it's gonna go away quickly. And hindsight's 2020, right? Yeah. Everything. <laughs>
Um, here it's a little different. We, um, we actually haven't seen, we saw in the MLS in the last week, we saw 4,600 transactions take place between new listings being taken, Crazy. deals being put under contract. Uh, I just wrote a pipe, I had to do a pipeline report for our brokerage. And over the last uh, two weeks, which is kind of, we're not on complete lockdown like you guys, obviously. Um, and we are considered an essential business down here. We are seeing business done, but you're touching upon a lot of different things like, you know, following up with your sphere of influence and, and all that stuff. And on the phone, I, the other day, uh, just to get out of the house, I went and started calling my top 50 agents as I walked. I ended up walking 6.23 miles while I made those calls. It was nuts. So let's focus on that activity that you are able to do right now. Cause, and part of this is I want Florida realtors to know just how lucky we are right now and that we should be super lucky be happy yeah. to be in florida right now it's thank you <laughs> thank you so one of the top three or four things and we're going to get into the conversations that people should be having but what are the top three or four things that realtors should be doing right now um in their business um I, i'd say listen the number one thing to do is uh is to keep structure right? The easiest thing to do if you're not able to go to the office or if things are kind of weird is to slowly start to treat every day like a Saturday, right? Where if you used to wake up early and work out, now nah, you're not really going to do it. You know, if you used to kind of be dieting, now you're not really going to do it. If you used to go to the office every day by eight o'clock, well, now you don't really have to because you don't have to do that. Like, no. make sure you keep the structure, you know, wake up, exercise, go to your mobile office or your home office by eight o'clock, keep all the structure that you have. Otherwise, because you, you got to keep your mind right, right? Even if the work you're doing is going to be very, very different given everything that's going on, you got to stay disciplined and you got to stay structured. Um, so like, for example, me, I'm talking to you from like this little guest casita yeah. uh, that my parents have. Um, that they built for me and my brothers when we come up so we don't like drive them totally crazy when we're all up here at the lake. Um, and so this is my mobile, this is my, this is my office right now. Yeah. I'm going to the casita. It's also my gym at the same time. Um, uh, you know, so keep structure. Two is use the time to brainstorm uh, ways that you're going to build business for once this all blows over. All right. So like once this all goes back to normal, like you finally have all this bonus time. We're not showing you're not, you know, putting out fires left and right. You're not commuting to different places in your office. Like if you have some extra time now, uh, and this is at least what I'm telling all my agents in New York, like how do you want your business to be different come to one? Like what can you put in place now? Is it different types of networking? Is it different types of marketing? Do you want to change like even simple stuff? Like do you want to change up the way your show sheets look to make yours stand out a little bit better? You just never had the time and it always was on your list, but you never really got to it. Well, now you have the time That's to right. do it. Um, and three, I would say <clears throat> find, uh, I, I did a, a newsletter, our big money energy newsletter yesterday and um, a, uh, uh, an Instagram post about it is, Stay mentally healthy by finding your and. Like, what's that thing that you're going to do during this time that you otherwise never would have done, right? Like, there's a couple agents in my team. One picked up drawing. Like, she's crushing it, following up with everybody, doing all the work that she otherwise would have done. And she, she loved to draw up until she was like 16. And then she went to school and this, that, the other. And so she picked it back up. And now she's drawing. And it makes her so much happier. Another agent um, picked up painting again. Um, another agent is writing their first book. I'm writing another book right now. Like, what's that and thing? Where you're gonna so do everything you're supposed to do and you're going to do something else. All right. So you stole one of my questions because I, I have it here literally. And I didn't share the questions with you before, but you just posted about your followers, quote unquote, and, and to share it with you while in quarantine. Yeah. You didn't mention what your and is. So what's, yeah. what's your end throughout this whole quarantine? Uh, I'm spending time every day writing. We're writing our, uh, uh, my second book. The first book was set like Sir Hans, and um, we've got a follow-up to that that will come out in January of 2021. I haven't announced it or released it or done anything, but now you know. So I'm spending this time. And I just haven't had time. Like I, I, you know, I just have not had the time. It's just life gets so busy. Like It's amazing how these slowdown periods really show you like how how regimented and kind of busy and routine life can become. And so it's nice actually to have a little bit of a breather to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to work on this. I'm going to work on that. Like I'm actually going to sit here and I'm going to, I'm going to build a business plan for myself. If you've never done that, 
Like if you've never organized your contacts and built out a good CRM, do it. Like use oh. the time to do it now. Like sit down and write all your thoughts together. If you have a new team, you know, if it's you and another agent or three agents or 10 agents, if you don't have an agent guide about how to close, how to negotiate, all your protocols, put that together, right? You'll build more team members by having that thing. Like all oh, there's so much stuff that we could be doing right now. So I've been super busy. Um, just doing totally different things than I otherwise would have been doing. Awesome. And you know, it's funny, you're talking about all that, man. I can see the color back in your face. I see the energy coming. I see the smile again. That's, yeah. that's the Ryan that I know, man. I love it. I love it. Talk to me about listing presentations. You, I know you never stop. You're a machine. Your team is a machine. How are you guys handling listing presentations right now? Uh, Zoom. Zoom and FaceTime. It's really weird. It's so weird. I actually do have a white button down shirt that I have in a closet right over here that I put on for like, you know, important things. Um, you are, you're sort of important to me, but for like sellers yeah. and developers, I've been putting on uh, white, white button down shirts um, and keeping my camo shorts on at the same yeah. time. Dude, I'm glad you're in a hoodie, man. This is, this is kind of, you know, what the quarantine has brought to our thing. It's, it's nitty and gritty right now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I love it on TV. You're seeing all these like titans of industry with like, like Play-Doh in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's like it's now you get a glimpse into their, into their real world. I mean, you keep hearing, I don't know if you hear it, but my kids keep opening the doors and uh, the alarm's going off. That's and good. All you know, that's I, do, I do actually, I'm a little disappointed in a lot of these people's decor at homes. Like a lot of wealthy people on CNN and CNBC all day long calling in and doing home videos. I'm like, dude, you're, you're like a billionaire and that's you got like crate and barrel ikea furniture behind you like what room is this like what is like the home decor i'm like dude i need to call you man you need to upgrade that gives you a reason to call absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> like hey i saw you on cnn yesterday it looks like you live in a pretty shitty house you want to upgrade well what was the first thing the first thing you said was man i like your pool and for the viewers that are watching this I started outside, but my Wi-Fi signal was going on, so I had to bring it inside before we started recording. And I had the pool behind me, and I was showing them around, and my kids, and, and all that. Um, what about buyers? What are you doing with your, your the, the? And we're going to talk about cancellations and how you're handling that. Um, how are you handling your active buyers right now? Are they just are, are they virtual? Are they looking virtually? Are they just saying, "Hey, we're waiting right now"? What do you see in there? Yeah, uh, we have some buyers who are looking virtually, but to be honest everybody just kind of wants this to pass, right? Oh, and if it's not gonna pass, we just wanna know that it's not gonna pass. Like, is this something, is our life now irreparably changed? Is, is everything gonna be different? Or is this just a virus and by June it's gonna go away and then by the summer we're all gonna say, man, wasn't that a crazy start to 2020? Like, you know, we, buyers wanna know, before they spend a lot of money, they need to know. And so the only buyers who are comfortable spending money in times like this where they're scared and in distress are the ones who want amazing deals, right? It. Where they're saying to themselves, and, and New York is very unique that way. And that's why I think it's, you guys are so fortunate to be in Florida. Like we are, you know, people in New York city are naturally very terrified people. Yep. You know, in negotiation. We've got a lot of buyers who are in contract who are now saying, if you want me to close, you know, I want a new price because I don't think the market's ever going to recover and prices are going to come down 50%. Yeah. Like that's not happening and it's not going to happen. Like, okay, well let's all wait and see what happens. They're like, what does that mean? You have to close on Tuesday and MIA. Like, what do I do? What do I do with that person? So <clears throat> a lot of it is just trying to keep the calm with everybody as best we can. Um, but most of our buyers were just, we're handholding and keeping them on the sidelines. So once this all goes back to normal, we can pounce because at the same time, no one is putting their apartments on the market in New York right now. Like last week, you know, I think on average we get like 800, uh, new listings a week in the city, kind of in the spring last week we had a hundred. Wow. Right. So, I mean, I, there's I, relatively speaking, there's nothing coming on the market. So, I think everyone's just going to kind of sit and wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was interesting. I shared with you, uh, just in Dayton, Broward County, the last uh, week alone, we had, it was like 2,700 new listings came to market. And somebody asked me, well, how did that compare to, let's say, a typical week in February? I didn't know the answer. And I couldn't give them the answer. But I'm like, just think about that for a minute. There's 2,700 listings that came in the market that you could either be a part of or not be a part of. And it's, and it's your choice. And overall, when you looked at the renting, the pending sales, it was over 4,600. Listen, there's 4,600 transactions being done last in the last week. There's 50,000 plus realtors. So technically, 10% of the realtors, if, if everybody did one deal, did a deal last week. 
you know, you could be a part of that, of that number if you choose to be. It's just a function of what, what, whether you choose to be or not. Um, so the clients that are wanting to cancel, how are you handling the conversations with them? You kept saying you're holding their hand. Um, how are you handling the conversations with them to make sure that, that that's actually what they want to do and not a knee-jerk reaction to what's happening in the market? Um, well, they're all knee-jerk reactions. And so we're telling a lot of people just to hang tight. Don't do anything now. Let's just wait. Right? If the market really collapses, if everything does get really, really bad, like you're not gonna, you don't even need to cancel because you, you won't have to. <laughs> the, the developer is going to be bankrupt. The banks are going to be bankrupt. There's going to be no money to buy anything, right? If this kind of yeah. goes on the way it's continuing to go on. But for right now, you also got a really great deal. It's not like it's 2007, Correct. you know, and then all of a sudden September 2008 hit and everyone's like, oh my God, and the world changes. No, like the market's been really tough in New York for the last four years. All the deals that we've done have been really, really brutal, huge discounts. Like one of our townhouses we're trying to close on right now the asking price is $40 million. We're in contract for just under 18. Okay. Wow. That's, that's not a 2007 type deal, right? That's not like they're in contract for 40 and it's going to be worth 18 tomorrow. No, like that deal is over 50% off because the market's really, really tough. Corona doesn't make it worse. Um, yeah. And I think the market will bounce back. You see like there's 10% swings in the stock market per day right now. Like that's, Correct. it's just pure fear pure hysteria. The general public doesn't know what's going on and everything is going to be okay. That's right. So and, and, and those people just to hang tight unless they have a contingency and they have a way out. Sometimes there's no way to stop them. Yeah. We kind of been doing that too. I tell, I've been coaching the agents on if somebody wants to cancel and we have a provision within the contract that let's say they have that contingency to cancel, but they have two days, three days left in the inspection period or whatever it is. We're trying to tell them, listen, I, I hear you. I understand sleep on it. And then, uh, I don't know if you can hear me right now, Ryan, you kind of, there you are. Um, uh, did you hear what I said? You know, you have two or three days before you can actually cancel, yeah, sleep on it. it, let's talk about it tomorrow and see if you still feel the same way. Some yeah. still cancel, but the overwhelming majority kind of get a, you know, a calmness about them. And I had a guy, we, yeah. no, 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 no. But what we've been doing is, uh, is to anybody we think who might feel like canceling, even if we think that they're fine, we're calling everybody and just saying, hey, there's a lot going on in the world right now. I haven't heard from you, so I'm sure you're, you're, you're fine, but let's hold tight on this deal. Um, and that way it comes from us. So that way we don't, the buyer doesn't have to feel nervous about calling us and being concerned and then having a knee jerk reaction. They feel good that their commissioned real estate agent is reaching out to them and saying, hold tight. Right. right. So we're, we're able to hold on to a lot more deals that way because then we're the ones who then say to them, let's hold tight. And if they say to us, yeah, you know, I was thinking about that then great, because that's a call that was going to come tomorrow or the next day that was going to pull out completely, but now they're with us to hold tight. And if they say, no, 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 I want to close, I want to close, I'm fine, then okay, great. But at least now we know. Got it. Awesome. Now, once the dust settles, right, and we're on the, we're on the backside of all this, whether this is in two weeks, two months, whatever it is, what are your thoughts on, in terms of where do you see the biggest opportunities for both realtors and for, for customers? Um, you know, I, I don't know yet, you know, it, it kind of remains to be seen. I think, you know, if interest rates, uh, are reflected in kind of new home financing rates, then people are going to be able to get such great deals with cheap, cheap, cheap money. Um, you know, the fed benchmark rate has really affected new business loans. Like we, you know, deal with people who get kind of business loans all the time. And those rates have come down a lot. It's right. crazy. So um, I think you're gonna have easy access to money. I think everything will be a really, really good deal, especially new construction, right? Because it's you're not dealing with Bob who just wants to sell his house and go get a third three bedroom. You know, you're dealing with a company that needs to pay down debt. Um, and new construction is a great place to get the best deals. Got it. All right. Last question. How's your course doing? I know you were talking about doing, uh, maximizing people's time or while they're on quarantine. How's the course doing? Where can they find it? And what's in there that if somebody were to sign up that hasn't already signed up, that would help guide them in today's uh, situation? Uh, yeah, the course is awesome, man. It's like, it's totally changed my life um, since we put it out, um, you know, uh, last summer. I mean, there's thousands upon thousands and thousands of agents in there 
Um, the membership is actually something that's totally blown my mind and I, I didn't know what to expect from it, but it's people who are kind of the monthly members who've gone through the course, who are part of the live Q and A's that we do uh, every single month, who are part of like the guides and they've created this whole referral community amongst them. We just did this awesome mastermind dinner with uh, the top 20 course graduates in New York City right before everything kind of went completely insane. Yeah. Um, and that, it was just super, super, super cool. So I've been able to meet so many amazing new real estate agents through it um, all around the world. Like we just, like today, I just posted on my Instagram stories. Uh, um, uh, and it's not just real estate agents. It's salespeople Correct. of all different types of businesses. Like there's a Formula 3 race car driver um, in Asia who's a course member who just signed up to be a pro member today, wow. literally. And I just posted that that email that I got because that that's just awesome. Like there's people from all walks of life and we can learn so much from all of them. But I, I would say um, if you're watching this right now and you haven't taken the course yet, uh, go to ryansirhant.com slash lead gen. Um, I made a video with my kind of seven uh, Sirhant secrets on how we generate leads without ever having to make a cold call because I hate cold calling and I think it's yeah. super awkward and weird and I've never done it before. Um, and so it's all the ways that you can generate leads from your couch if you are quarantined. So I made that video. Um, right before, uh, right before the kind of quarantine thing hit, so it was kind of good timing, and it's free, and you can just watch it if you want to figure out how to generate leads. All right, there you go, Ryan, dude. Number three within ninety nine, one every thirty three sessions or so or interviews. This is awesome. Um, thanks again for your time, man. I want to get you back on on the flip side of this to then see how we capitalize yeah. on the. On dude, the I'll have like the biggest beard by then. I'll be so <laughs> fat. I'll put on the COVID nineteen pounds. <laughs> Um, oh my God! Oh, so I did, I did, in the house. COVID nineteen pounds. <laughs> the COVID. It's like the freshman fifteen. This is the COVID nineteen. Everyone's gonna come out of this with some extra weight because you're not moving. You're just stuck in your house, and there's just if there's bread and cookies. What do you want from me, man? Dude, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I gotta, I gotta say something. And, when, and off camera, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you over there. Luckily, about when we moved out to the burbs of Miami, uh, we can no longer go to CrossFit gyms just because time constraints, right? Yeah. Uh, so we ended up putting an entire CrossFit gym in our garage and I have a nutritionist wow. and this is the lightest I've weighed in over a year. Maybe it's the stress. Really? Levels. Yeah. So uh, you got to show that to me once this is done. Yeah. Well, I'll, when I stop recording, I'll pop over there. Ryan, any parting words for the audience before I, uh, before I take stay, stay healthy, stay safe. You know, times of stress are, are, are there for a reason, right? They show us who the winners and who the losers are and scary times are the mother of entrepreneurship. Right. Like I, I got into the business the day Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy and it was the best time to get into the business in hindsight. And I think a lot of us now, especially if you're a new agent and if you're coming out of this, or even if you're a veteran, we're all going to look back and we're going to say, wow, you know what? I'm glad I stuck through 2020 because I think the 2020s, right? 2020 to 2030 are going to rip and they're going to be insane. Now that we've kind of like burst this little bubble, cause we are all kind of waiting for it. Yeah. Now it's happened. It's going to go away quickly. And hindsight's 2020, right? Everything's going to be good. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it, man. Of course.